Hello and welcome to Low Volume Small Form Factors Podcast. Uh, this is Josh Ramirez and I'm pleased to say we've got a full house today as well as a very special guest. Uh, but first let me go through uh, who's joining us uh, per usual. We've got uh, James Shell. James, how you doing? Hi, uh, doing good. It's just uh, been a busy week and it's only going to get busier. But yeah, doing good. <laughs> <laughs> man do i know that feeling <laughs> we've also got john morrison hey john how you doing uh i'm here <laughs> is that good enough <laughs> you made it <laughs> Yay. so glad you could join uh we have jay madison jay how have you been i've been great great week ready for this podcast Yes, me too, me too. And I'm happy to say that it's not just us four per per usual. We are also joined by a, a special guest. Um, most people will know him as Craig Brew on the forums here at uh, SFF Forum as well as basically throughout all of the interwebs. Uh, but please, a warm round of applause for Craig Brueger. Craig, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? It's, it's uh, nice to be here. All right, so I'm going to actually have us move on to the news first and foremost. A lot of the show, we're actually going to be talking with Craig uh, about some of his his history. He's done stuff for uh, Lasias, SFF Review, uh, and just overall has contributed a lot to the SFF community. But I figure we'll go through the few news items that we do have um, before we enter the interview. And uh, Craig, feel free to basically jump in and add commentary and color, just like any of us uh, any of us would. Okay. Okay, will do. Okay, so the first bit of news that I wanted to bring up um, is actually something that's happened within um, SFF Forum and sort of our community, uh, and that has to do with an announcement we made earlier this past week, uh, whereby we actually launched uh, a brand new website, uh, SFF Wiki, which is now live at sffwiki.net. Uh, we, we actually timed the launch of the wiki to the one-year anniversary of the forum, um, which wasn't entirely coincidental in so far that we figured it would be kind of the opportune time to launch that uh, bit of uh, service. And, you know, we, we'd been working on this in, in a beta form for a better part of a month or so. Uh, basically, we, we selected some members of the community who we felt would be good for contributing to this sort of thing, just to sort of make sure it was ready for a public release. Um, but if you look in the show notes, uh, I wrote up a relatively simple post for the forum explaining kind of the purpose of uh, the wiki. Uh, essentially, you know, a lot of the times people are looking for information on particular components or, or guides or other bits of info, and they're, they're looking for assistance in, in their builds. Uh, and our hope is that with, with this wiki, we've basically provided this platform that can act as a centralized repository for that sort of information. Uh, especially when you're talking about small form factor builds, trying to understand how components might fit and, and work together and their actual dimensions and things of that nature. It gets pretty complicated pretty quickly and uh, there hasn't really been a place on the internet up until now where it was obvious and apparent and you know the community was sort of enabled through uh, tools and just a place to post stuff to actually um, have that centralized repository available. Uh, so we already have some content up there. It's a little thin uh, just because obviously it's a brand new thing, uh, but we'd encourage all listeners, all forum members to both look at the forum and see what's on there now, um, You know, see if there are any things that they can uh, con contribute to, uh, but otherwise just to sort of get the word out. Uh, to be honest, when it comes to something like a wiki, the more people that read it and contribute to it, uh, the more successful it's going to be. Uh, so we're incredibly excited that this is launched. Uh, we're really looking forward to what people are going to start uploading to the wiki now that it's public rather than just private to sort of the original editors. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I personally think this is going to be one of the most important uh, websites we maintain um, within sort of this network that we've built across this and SFF Network and SFF Forum and the podcast and all of this. Um, but I didn't know if you guys wanted to add anything to that. Um, like one thing is that, I mean, if anybody, the power supply section is fairly well developed, but a lot of the other sections are fairly bare bone right now. And part of it is that, um, 
I just wanted more feedback on how those sections should be organized. Like we've already had quite a bit of discussion now since the wiki launch on how to organize the case section. Um, because a, a lot of it is that it, I'd rather get feedback from multiple people on how stuff should be organized because once we kind of set up an organization system for the different sections, it's going to be kind of a pain to change it later. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, even if you're not really up for contributing like specific content, I mean, if you have any input on like how stuff should be organized or what type of data points we should have for like, say motherboards and for cases and things like that. Yeah, definitely feel free to, to post in the, uh, the wiki section of the forum. Um, but, uh, yeah, cause a lot of them other than power supplies really, uh, need a bit of work. All right, moving on to news that isn't specific to us. Uh, the two items we have in our show notes. Um, first one has to do actually with MSI, who the last time we talked about MSI, we were talking, I believe, about their, uh, uh, what was it, the Vortex or the, what was the thing they announced at um, uh, CES? Yeah, it was the Vortex. Was the Vortex, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was basically almost like a Mac Pro-like cylinder enclosure. Very impressive, very interesting. Um, once again, we're, we're coming back to them, and they've built another sort of small form factor uh, computer, uh, this being the QB2 Plus and QB2 Plus V Pro. Uh, and as that name would imply, uh, these are actually much smaller even, even than that. This is uh, a computer, or at least uh, some computers on offer, that take advantage of the new mini STX or 5x5 motherboard um, form factor that Intel announced relatively recently. Um, we have a link in the show notes, uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, an enclosure that uses a motherboard that's like 30% or so smaller than mini ITX. So obviously sort of shrinking <laughs> components down is the focus, but compared with something like a Nook, the benefit of this is that at least in theory, the, uh, the processor itself is swappable and it's a bit more uh, expandable in terms of the components you can use and the IO that's, uh, present. So for example, for the QB2, I see we've got Ethernet and a few uh, USB 3.0 and uh, even a Display Port and an HDMI HDMI port. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, all of that relatively competent uh, processor and integrated graphics and something that's like the size of a really large sandwich. Pretty impressive, at least in my book. What seems to be missing from this, though, however, when I first heard about the Mini STX, I thought it was going to be just standard desktop components, and I'm sure we'll get that eventually, but these are designed, or this specific system is designed to run the T-chips, like the 6700T, and also it has its own custom backplate. I thought that this would just be more of a generic motherboard that came with, each, that each one came with its own backplate like a normal um, mini ITX board would come with. I didn't realize that they were, we were going to get proprietary backplates that you couldn't change the motherboard and the case out. So that that's interesting. I guess we'll have to see what happens in the future. I was really hoping to see MXM capable. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have some little bit... Ah, dang it. I'm sorry, guys. My brain's, brain's not working. It's, it's way too early here in the morning. <laughs> uh, but it, it would be nice to see upgradable graphics in something like this. You know, the processor is only part of the equation. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is that, you know, as I mentioned, you know, what's unique about 5x5 compared to, like, a NUC is that it's a socketed design, right? So you can sort of swap out the the CPU if you so desired. But, you know, looking at the photos, it's not it's not apparent that that's going to be an easy thing to do for this, <laughs> for this computer, <laughs> let alone something you would want to do. Um, and, and to Jay's point, I mean, it, you know, it's a socketed design. You can take in processors, but it's only it's only a range that's more focused on um, power efficiency, you know, beyond anything else. And that makes sense for an enclosure of this size. But that means in terms of like, you know, theoretic, theoretically, the most amount of compute power you'd ever expect to get from this is relatively low on the spectrum of desktops. Think about like a Gigabyte Bricks, where, which is not much bigger than this, but they released a model with a full quad core with hyper-threading and a GTX 760 inside a tiny, tiny little box. So this, for me, I, I don't 
really see necessarily the benefit of having mini SCX if you're going to use these types of chips because you can get the same performance from Nook style systems for I would imagine I don't know what the pricing on this is going to be but I would imagine it'd be similar in the same ballpark yeah I mean it does make you wonder I mean this because the sizes of those are relatively comparable and you know, practically speaking, are you ever really going to seek to swap out the processor? And, you know, at least in this implementation, the, the benefits of the 5x5 five five form factor doesn't seem to be, you know, manifestly huge in comparison to just going with a complete solution that has a discrete graphics chip like the bricks. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's all to be said. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'll add is that uh, reading the uh, the press release that MSI sent out, they actually do spell out some of the use cases they think make sense. So, you know, they actually have like this this bulleted point, like your commercial supporter MSI QB2 Plus is equipped with multiple USB ports for connecting barcode scanners, credit card readers, receipt printers, and many more to make it an optimal cutting-edge platform for a variety of commercial projects and altogether replacing existing commercial POS machines. So they seem to be saying this is a great option for a retail or other sort of uh, integrated uh, computing environments where you need dedicated machines for relatively simple purposes. But that can, you know, connectivity and size and reliability are of um of relative import if they're well, if they're aiming sense. at uh point of sale systems it needs a serial port because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh i think uh we had one restaurant here in town that came into the store looking for uh i forget what but their software that runs like the kitchen software is 16-bit um so they had to run 32-bit machines. So they they had they wanted RAM, but they couldn't go over four gigs. So um, like <laughs> this type of like point of sale is like one of those things that if it's not broke, don't fix it. So it's very common for that to be running like serial and stuff. So like to me, their uh, <laughs> like their use case, I think, is not quite as uh, big a market as they make it seem. Um, cause a lot of either like you're running like these old serial equipped systems or you're running off like an iPad or something. So to kind of target this like supposed middle ground seems a bit odd. <laughs> Most retail environments now moving to touchscreen based devices anyway. Yep. That's certainly what I've been seeing. All right, next up in our news, and actually the last bit of news we're covering, uh, and this is an article that, John, you wrote, um, and I'm sure I'm going to get the name wrong, but it's uh, the, the article's title was Alusha's R50 is a gorgeous fanless PC. I am inclined to agree, and, you know, typically fanless PCs, uh, aesthetically at least, are going to look a little bit interesting because they have to have, you know, an all-metal exterior that is relatively sort of textured and interesting just to maximize surface area in a way so that it can, you know, release all of that heat that's being generated, you know, can't cool it actively, so they're not going to have any vents. Um, but, you know, this, this particular solution looks nice, if only because of the material choice that they decided to go with. You have, um, I'm guessing, either just metal or steel plates you know, you've got sort of these fins going from the front to the back of the enclosure, but then sort of halfway through, those fins change from a black painted steel to a, a raw copper. And you've got like four or five of these fins that sort of make this nice copper stripe going through this otherwise relatively unassuming, not terribly interesting enclosure. Uh, as far as the uh, components itself, uh, I believe you have the choice between the i3-6100U or the i5-6260U. Uh, memory options from 8 to 32 gigs, dual channel DDR4, and you have storage options going up to like a half terabyte SSDs. Uh, it is relatively expensive. The cheapest is 599 uh, pounds which like to dollars is going to be you know, what like 800 bucks um but it does look nice and uh you know it's clearly a relatively dedicated machine you've got you know two usb ports gigabyte lan some display port and uh a little c connection for for a wi-fi antenna but beyond that 
uh, not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily one with the most ports in the world. <laughs> but John, I figured you could speak more to this uh, since you wrote the article. Uh, well, I've got one thing to say. It's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting part of it is uh, they're actually claiming their, uh, what's the wording, uh, just like one of our competitors in uh, Cupertino, or however you pronounce that, um, they're using CNC milling uh, technology to actually make the case. So Really? It's al yeah, aluminium and copper. Oh, that it is beautiful. It is beautiful. When I saw that uh, on your front page, I'm like, man, that that's, at first I thought it was a mod. I mean, it, it just looked that unique. I was surprised. Yeah, I, I really liked it, uh, if only because, you know, and I've made this comment um, before to you guys, and I think on the forums at least once, but, you know, in, in my mind, copper is a really, really interesting material from just uh, the how it looks standpoint. And, you know, obviously, if, you know, insert steampunk build here, they use copper all over the place, but... Like I, I, I've always felt that it's a, it's a look and a material that's really kind of unexplored and not used terribly often when it when it ought to be in various components and other things. Uh, there was one graphics card EVGA brought out relatively recently. It was a Kingpin edition of the 980 Ti, and they went all in with you know this nice conservative black shroud, but all of the heat pipes and everything sort of beneath that were this wonderful glistening copper color and it just looked absolutely stunning uh, at least to my estimation so so to see this to see this enclosure come around i think they did a really really good job of sort of embracing you know that neat interesting natural look of the of the copper uh and you know the other thing too from an efficiency standpoint is that you know copper is an excellent choice of material to use as a passive heat sink that's integrated into the chassis itself so not only does it look nice but it's actually going to be pretty darn effective in terms of um, conducting heat away from the uh, from the processor as quickly as possible and releasing that into the environment so that you have this like fanless tech that actually you know works relatively well and isn't going to get too hot too quickly um, so it's this n sort of this nice marriage of uh, you know using copper for the practical side of it but also integrating it in a way where it actually looks really nice and positively uh, contributes to the aesthetics of the enclosure so uh, pricey for what it is um, but clearly this is aimed at sort of a professional market and, you know, overall, I think they did a good job. We need a mini ITX version. That is all. Yes, yes, we do. I, I, I do happen to have a new CNC machine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> although I, I'm surprised to see that they're, they're using a five axis, uh, CNC to cut this out. So. You know, I, I'm thinking. I, when I first looked at it, I can I could see where they could have multiple plates just kind of uh, sandwiched together with long bolts or something like that. But the fact that they actually use five-axis uh, machines to cut this out—that's actually pretty impressive. Maybe a bit excessive, but pretty impressive. Yeah, I think it is a bit excessive because, like, um, I mean, well, for if they're aiming at the high end, sure. But then, like, they spit like in the same paragraph that they mentioned the five-axis thing. They say, um, blah, 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 achieve ma amazing thermal performance and be completely fanless, even in the high temperatures of classrooms in Ghana, where we work. It's like, mm, I don't know about what schools you're <laughs> going to, but most schools I would think of in Ghana probably can't afford this. <laughs> <laughs> a minor point, a minor point. <laughs> I have to admit, I did that. That thought didn't even occur to me. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> All right, and with that, we have the news, and now we shall move to the grand event, which is, of course, our interview with uh, with Craig. Um, and and just to just to give all of our listeners the introduction, because I'm sure there'll be some of you guys who aren't familiar with um, sort of who Craig is. Uh, he's the founder of both Losias and SFF Review. Uh, both of which are, in many respects, uh, spiritual ancestors to smallformfactor.net. In fact, if you sort of look around, you'll see some of the members of the forum have like a Losias banner, which is just indicative of people that were particularly active uh, in that community in the past. Uh, Craig has done all sorts of work, 
all sorts of mods, all sorts of um, reporting, and just in terms of his involvement with um, small form factor systems in that community, and it goes back further than I think any of us here can reasonably claim to say it goes back for ourselves. Uh, so, Craig, first off, thank you so, so much for, for joining us. I've been looking forward to, to this, uh, to speaking with you ever since we got that scheduled like a month ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I wanted to kick it off by giving you an opportunity to sort of introduce yourself to our listeners and talk about sort of how it all began and how you first got into uh, small form factor computing. Okay, uh, I'll try to keep it under about three hours uh, in length. <laughs> I, I do have a tendency to kind of kind of talk on uh, a bit, but uh, you know, this goes back to uh, I, I would say shortly after I was was first divorced, and, and the reason that comes into play is because I finally had money to do what I wanted to do, you know, and uh, I built my first custom computer it was in a uh, thermal take tsunami case you know and had the the chrome uh, metallic sleeving you know over the, the you know rounded cables and stuff like that it was is at the time it was just it, it was pretty awesome i was pretty proud of it but it was a big case you know i really didn't know much about small form factor i didn't have much exposure to it uh until one day i was flipping through a a i think it was pc magazine at the time and I, I saw they had a little article for the shuttle SN25P. And I saw that case, uh, the, a computer. I was like, I have to have that. That is awesome, you know, because it was small. It was it was high performance. And I, I just, I said, that's it. I want it. So I bought one. And I got it. It was the most beautiful little, little shoebox ever. You know, I had that uh, kind of a metallic steel blue you know front on it and it was just everything i wanted a computer and you know coming from from towers to, to this little box that that was still high performance you know at the time the the best card you could get was a, a nvidia 7800 gtx you know so i dropped one of those cards in there and it was just just a beautiful gaming machine i had you know dual 19 inch monitors you know i was i was rolling big and this was about 2006 or so and uh I used that setup for a little while, and I think, you know, just in the course of looking at stuff on the internet, I came across uh, Alpha Cool uh, LCD display. I think it was maybe maybe what four or five inches diagonal, and I said, you know, that's pretty cool. But I'm looking at my little shoebox, and there's no way that screen can fit in this computer. You know, there's no bays on the front, and so I started thinking of like, well, how can I get this little display in this? the shuttle and for whatever reason i don't you know came across uh uh front panel express it's a company in in uh washington state and they take uh your design they have this little little program called front panel designer you could design something submit the, the, the drawing to them and they would send you back a finished product and so so all these pieces kind of fell together I was like you know what I'll just put a new custom front plate on this you know I'll, I'll, I'll you know, mod the, the screen to fit behind the plate and you know I, I did it I got it uh, it took maybe four or five hours to get this display in these custom panels for the front of this this computer and it, it was just amazing and at that point not only was my love for small fact small form factor really uh born but you know my love of modding you know because I, I took pictures of it i posted it online uh i posted some pictures at uh Sudian, and you know it started getting some attention and i'm like this is this is kind of cool you know i really wasn't involved in stuff you know, modding or small form factor at all before that it was it just kind of was organic and and natural and uh, i actually had that pc for for quite a while and then shuttle came out with their sn 26p which was the same size only it was sli so i dropped another uh, 7800 gtx in that uh, system and and bought a, an fx60 yeah, this is AMD socket 939 at the time. So I bought an FX60. So at that time, that was the the highest performance small form factor computer you can get. There was just nothing else that compared to it. 
uh, and it was, it was great. And then I realized that two 7800 GTXs in a small case like that would overheat if you were uh, looking at an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> it, it just you know it, it just it's like oh I, I i'm on line 200 uh it's it's overheating and it's going to shut down it, and it was beautiful but just not functional so uh i started looking at other options like well, okay well this is not gonna not gonna work but i was in love with the the idea of sli um at that time i don't feel like uh graphics card performance for a single card was was that great i know it's a different story now but back then if you really wanted to play games at, at higher resolutions or with the eye candy cranked up you really wanted sli and th- there weren't many options um so that kind of led into me uh looking for a new solution uh and that is what led to Project Losias, which is is how the Losias name, you know, got started to begin with. Yeah. So why don't you elaborate on that? Because that's actually a sort of a big component of all the stuff that you've done that many of us are aware of, and um, certainly for some of us, like you know, John, for example, really got us into small form factor to begin with. Right. Well, uh, Project Losias was Losias was based on a. Uh, Silverstone SG01 case and at the time you know I had it was just it was just kind of funny how everything just fell together I mean everything had a reason so I, I had this the shuttle you know SN26P the dual 7800 GTXs and the FX60 well you know when you're talking about making use of components you already had at the time there was only one choice there was a EVGA uh, uh, SLI motherboard at the time is like a NF44 something or other. And I, I'm trying to remember, uh, but it was, at the time it was the only option for SLI in a micro ATX form factor. There was just nothing else. But it was cool because I could take my existing hardware, drop it in this uh, motherboard and just have it work. So I, I got this shuttle and I thought the, uh, the, the LCD screen you know, the small LCD screen from from uh, the the shuttle was, was such a great idea. It's like, you know, how do I make something bigger, better? Uh, so I came across a seven inch LCD screen, little, little flat panel. It's like, you know, it'd be cool if I could put that in the front of the case. And then I started thinking, well, well you know, why why stop there? Uh, so I started thinking of if other things I could add to this relatively small case. Like, well, you know, I'm, I'm big on storage i gotta have lots of hard drives in there so it's like well i made sure i uh, could fit three hard drives in there you know so i had you know three hard drives i had the the dual uh video cards which at the time you know the 7800s i decided i i had to upgrade so i, I got 8800s so now we're we're talking uh micro atx board a uh, double width video cards but i decided i wanted uh, a dedicated uh, sound card in there too so i got a uh, uh, extension and actually had uh, the sound card cable wedged in there between the video cards and up around over the side and it's like okay well let's do something unique for cooling so i actually had a, a cool it a peltier cooler that i integrated oh, wow. and i actually had it yeah i know at, at the time i know there was a whole lot of talk about whether that that cooler was actually effective or not you know it seemed to be uh one of those coolers that was a cool idea but got heat soaked rather quickly uh so i actually broke out and installed another radiator to the bottom of the power supply and if you're familiar with the the layout on the that particular case uh there is a little bit of room and you could actually uh have the uh, cpu cooler underneath the uh, GP or sorry the PSU and it would draw air up and out so I actually had a radiator underneath the the power supply that would help add additional cooling so you know I had the integrated fan controller the hard drives that the Peltier you know the I even had a little room for a little reservoir and and I uh, had such good success with uh, front panel express that I went back and actually had them uh, do custom side panels for this case and I actually went to uh falcon northwest at the time they they had a case that had a 
uh, was based on this Silverstone case and it actually had a carrying handle. I went to them and said, hey, I know, you know, this is maybe kind of an odd request, but could you sell me the handle uh, separately? And they, they did. They actually just gave it to me. They said, oh, sure. You know, I showed them what I was doing. It's like, this is cool. Go ahead, have this, you know. And and so at that point, you know, uh, Losias was born, but it didn't have a name until maybe halfway through the project. And, and I guess, you know, some people get obsessed with, it's like, what am I going to name this? I have, you know, I got to have a name for it. And, you know, coming up with an acronym, you know, I, I look back now and it seems to make perfect sense. But at the time, I really don't remember how I come up with uh, the, the name Losias, which actually does have a meaning. And at the time, it was uh, lots of shit in a sugo because <laughs> this this case was just packed. And as I moved on past that project, it was just lots of stuff in a system, you know, to make it a more general term. So, so that project led to me starting Lasias.net, and uh, that site, you know, originally was never supposed to be more than a repository for me to to kind of duplicate what I was posting in, in work logs on other forums, and I wanted to be able to host my own pictures. You know, at, at the time, I, I think I was using Image Shack, which was you know, prone to limits. They, they weren't always up. And I just wanted to have stuff consolidated uh, in one location. So I, I started a simple WordPress blog where I, I logged all of my work. And that, that's kind of how uh, Losias got started uh, back there in the beginning. And this was, what, 2008? Let's see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. You know, this... It doesn't seem like it's been that long ago until I, I you know, actually really think about it. Uh, Losias, you know, my own work was, was going pretty well. <laughs> and uh, it was suggested to me that I start a forum. And it, I don't think it was really something I was interested in at the time. It just seemed like a lot of work. But I had a lot of guys encouraging me to do that. And so we added a PHP BB forum. And uh, the rest is kind of history. Yeah, and in fact, the forum and, and that uh, website aren't the only things you worked on. Uh, you had uh, a few other projects, uh, ITX Gamer as well as uh, SSF Review, of course. Um, so do you want to talk through sort of like how those sort of joined the collection of sites you were managing and sort of your involvement in those projects? Okay. Uh, yeah, Lasias uh, and the forums were were up and, and running for for several years, and we had a good amount of traffic, and we had you know some some uh, great members that were were posting uh, frequently. You know, I, I think it was going in a positive direction, uh, and then kind of out of the blue, I was contacted by uh, a third party who had an affiliation with a another rather large uh, website and had a uh, new interest in small form factor and realized that at the time there was really no other uh, website out there really dedicated to small form factor like we were so uh, w with his input we decided uh, you know what maybe we can take this in a a slightly more professional direction uh, and you know, not that Losias wasn't professional, but, you know, it was just a bunch of guys just kind of hanging around and talking, you know. Uh, he thought maybe we could turn it into something more, maybe actually a, a sustainable business or, or something that at least uh, was, was more self-sustaining. And so we decided to uh, rebrand to SFF Review. Uh, and, you know, that decision wasn't taken lightly because, you know, Losias was kind of my baby. Things were just working. Um, but just before we, we switched to SFF review, we decided, or I decided <laughs> we would move from PHP BB, which, you know, our, our template and, and our, our site was, was so custom that every time they came out with an update, it was just a, a huge pain in the butt to go through and update and then fix everything that broke. And, you know, I'm, I'm no programmer at all but i got to know phpb you know the backside of it more 
more than I'd like to have. Uh, <laughs> I, I know uh, when I first started the forum, you know, I had, I had no programming experience at all, no, no design experience at all. And I was working with somebody, uh, uh, Stuart, who uh, was a, a big proponent to, to really help push me along. And I know I would get some great idea. I'd be, be looking for mods you know, or, or something custom for the site. And I look at the instructions that, you know what, I can integrate this. I can do this. This is no problem. So, you know, I'd start maybe 11 o'clock midnight, you know, on a, on a, uh, weeknight thinking, okay, this will take an hour. Well, four hours later, I had completely screwed something up. The site was completely inaccessible and I'm trying to get Stuart on Skype. He's like, hey man, I'm sorry, I broke the site, <laughs> you know? So it's like, uh, don't worry, I'll fix it. You know, so we went through that <laughs> uh, quite a bit, but we decided after enough of that to, to go ahead and get professional and get a V Bulletin license. And so I did, and we were actually running a V Bolton uh, for a while before we switched to uh, SFF Review. Uh, but we were, we wanted something more integrated. The whole idea, or at least, at least for me, the idea was to have front page content tied in with the forum seamlessly. So you could post an article on the front page, somebody could comment, and that comment would be tied to a post in the forum. You know, that's the kind of integration I wanted. Well, the reality was it was a whole lot harder to implement. You know, I mean, v Bolton had some functionality for that, but, but v Bolton was just, just terrible to work with. We, we, we hated it. Uh, but that's kind of where we were when we switched to SFR, FS, SFFR review. You know, we were, we were kind of right in the middle of that v Bolton you know, transition. And I know it was uh, at CES a, a couple years ago, when we made the, the the actual real switch from Losias to SFF Review, and I was at CES, and, and Jordan did it pretty much while I was there, and uh, we, I got back, we started doing a few tweaking, you know, a few tweaks, you know, changing a few things, and you know, I, I think that was kind of the the start of our our problems. Um, we never really got things set up quite like we we wanted and as a result you know traffic suffered and and it was a little hard to contribute content for something that we felt was kind of in in flux <laughs> you know it, it, we, we yeah we did we did keep it up um but i was never really satisfied i wasn't happy with v bolton and so we or me actually with with with, with the help of, of somebody else who who thought switching to Joomla was a great idea. No. We, we kind of, uh, I, I forget what particular problem I was having, you know, with, with the site at one time. I just pretty much hopped in uh, IRC and said, you know what, screw it. Let's switch. Let's do it now. <laughs> just, just, we just kind of, we just kind of half-assed to switch to, to Joomla and, and a new forum set up and, and that that was pretty much the end of it because we never really did get things up and running after that which is unfortunate but um you know i didn't have the tight to me the, the the time to maintain it i didn't have the skill to 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 deal with that at all uh and kind of in the middle of all this uh actually john you you came to me uh with the information about itx gamer uh the uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> in in the in the middle of all this transition and all this uh, change, uh, I, I talked to the the guy who owned ITX Gamer, and he kind of had no interest in, in moving forward with the site. He had other things going on, and so I thought it'd be a great idea to move to to move uh, ITX Gamer over uh, under the SFFR umbrella, which you know sounded like a good idea at the time but it was just too much to take on at once so i, I went ahead and bought the itx gamer uh, site and domain and the the goal was to integrate everything you know to take their members take their content and and just just integrate it into one site and it sounded like a great idea at the time but but the the realities of it it was just it was just too too much uh, it wasn't an easy project so you mentioned a website called, uh, or a community called Sudhai, and what was all that, that about? 
okay, you know, back back in the day, you know, back 2006, 2007, uh, there was a site called Sudian. And, and as we've discussed before, we think that's how it's pronounced. You know, it's one of those names you never really hear pronounced in real life. So it's just a guess. But Much like Lassage. Uh, exactly, exactly. Except I made it up. I can say what I want. So. That's true. <laughs> uh, but Sudian at the time was the place uh, for anything to deal with uh, s- small form factor or uh, – bare bones builds uh they had a really huge shuttle uh, community uh they had uh some msi guys there uh i think a open had some bare bones pcs and you know anything small sudan was a place to go in fact their 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 shuttle support section uh was larger than than shuttle zone support so that was kind of the place you went if you did anything with small farm vector which was a really new thing at the time um and when i started uh you know with with small farm to myself with the, the shuttle you know i went there it was relatively new had a few support questions and saw that they kind of had a, a modding community although it was very small uh but that's where i first logged uh my, my shuttle mod uh project losias which ended up being the the most visited thread that that forum had ever had, you know, and and that's kind of where I I started uh, mentioning, you know, Project Rogue, which was the follow up to Losias, you know, so it was a really uh, large community. Uh, actually, towards the the end of its life, I became a moderator there, and was really quite involved in in trying to you know get content posted, uh, you know. Uh, help people interact with the community and uh the owner who actually has a a political career beyond the site just didn't have time for it anymore and we could see that traffic was down people weren't visiting anymore people were were just just going elsewhere and so in an effort to try and save it i actually offered to to buy the site uh, I thought it would be a, a great fit for Losias, which was uh, thriving at the time, and I thought it would be a shame to to lose that that resource, which had been going for years and years at that point. You know, just just tens of thousands of thousands of threads and, and thousands of members, and it's like, you know, we can't let this go because there there was no place else uh, beyond Losias and maybe a few you know sub forum sections in, in larger sites. And uh, I made multiple offers to the owner to to buy the site, and he wasn't interested in selling. It just wasn't interested, and it's not that that money was an issue. He just didn't want to sell it. He he wanted to take the site static and just leave it as a a resource or a reference. You know, he just kind of had a hard time letting go of his baby, you know, so to speak. Uh, and I think we really could have saved the site and done something with it at that point. Um, but he said, no, let's, let's leave it static. And he ended up moving hosting, uh, from an actual paid service to, I think somebody's basement. (laughs) And that was pretty much the death knell for Sudian. And I don't think there's even a redirect up now. I haven't checked in years. The site's up at the moment, but it's pretty much a dead page. Yeah, it's just like a placeholder page. Yeah, Yeah, the, the news articles and the forums all... There's bits and pieces of it on the Internet Archive, but it's basically all gone. And that's unfortunate because it was it was a great, great resource. Uh, I, I know Losias, we tend to have a little bit more uh, modding focus. I mean, that was how I really started. And so that was kind of what drove Losias in the beginning and, and the forums. It was all about modding and projects. But Sudian was, was all about, you know, tech support and resources and, and stuff like that so it was it was something we didn't really focus on and and they they had covered in depth so uh what are you doing now well uh lately uh i've got a few side projects going on which, which honestly didn't help with uh sff review you know uh with with the whole changeover chaos and and not being able to to get things up or, you know, right there, which, which, which I want to add, because it, I was reminded of this, you know, uh, everything ever done to Los Sias and SSF review, you know, that was all volunteer labor. I want, I want to mention that, uh, Los Sias and SFF review, 
you know, we didn't have any paid programmers at all. It was all, all volunteer. And a lot of, uh, the development revolved around the free time that, uh, our members had. And, and there were a couple guys in particular, you know, John, who's, who's on this recording, Jordan, who is, is, uh, following along in chat, uh, Stuart originally, you know, they really helped make Losias what it is and what it was, uh, I, I couldn't have done anything without them. You know, I was just kind of a, a newbie with an idea. And uh, the, the amount of time they put in over the years, you know, helping support and, and, and pitch in uh, probably, you know, didn't help their, their stress levels any, but it, it certainly uh, kind of helped keep things keep things going. You know, I mean, I, I come up with some crazy idea. They say, um okay are you sure it's like oh yeah sure it's a great idea and they would they would find a way to implement it and then when we started doing the uh, losias uh podcast uh steve hall he he was our our tireless sound engineer who managed to make some of the stuff we recorded sound way better than it deserved uh but you know it was an all volunteer effort and you know as as you know, things move on. You know, I wasn't modding as much. I, I have a, a side project called the Jeep dash core.com. And I was using my CNC machine to make custom uh, lighted LED cup holders for Jeep vehicles. And that started to take off and take a lot of my time. That coupled with the fact that uh, I had moved from, from one house to two hours away in another house. Uh, you know, there were all these things that were taking up um my time you know and i just couldn't focus on on content like i wanted to and i guess i kind of came to the point where i realized you know maybe this isn't sustainable you know we 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 passed our peak and if i can't give my time as much as as i'd hoped to you know i certainly couldn't expect others to and that kind of ultimately led to uh me having a conversation with with john saying okay you know i've got these uh these assets, you know, these, these resources, uh, SF, SFF review and SFF wiki and, uh, you know, ITX gamers, like, you know what, I can't do anything with them. I'm not going to do anything with them. <laughs> Maybe you can. And so at that, that point, uh, you guys basically got everything, everything I had it without, uh, I'm sorry, with the exception of the lasize.net d- domain itself. So with, uh, with everything transferred to, to, uh, SFF uh, net and, and forums, it, you know, it kind of kind of cleared my plate to, to do my own thing. So I've been focusing on Jeep Core. Uh, I've got a new CNC machine. I've got a new mod uh, I'm planning again. So I'll get, I'll get back to the stuff that makes me happy. Yeah, the, the timing of um, your conversation with me worked out perfectly with me getting the small form factor uh, domain name and contacting uh, James and Joshua about possible collaboration. So it's Maybe it was meant to be. Yeah, you, you know, I, I think so. Because as it's, it's many guys, you know, that are willing to, to step forward and, and help and, and, and do whatever, you know, you, you still, if it's if it's your project, if, it, if you're the one ultimately responsible for it and paying the bill, you know, you need, you need to be involved. You can't rely on others. And at that point, I just, I just didn't feel like I had uh, enough time or maybe, maybe even enough interest at that point to just continue what was, you know, so I thought, you know, if we can give this to somebody who can take care of it and you guys have done an outstanding job of taking what was and kind of integrated it into a new direction. And I'm really happy to be part of that community. I've got one more question. So what's happening with Project Hutch? <laughs> you, I oughta, if I, if I could reach this microphone, uh, it's it's sitting in a box in my garage right now, and and it's funny you mention that because Project Hutch and actually Project Osidius uh, were happening at the same time. Okay, this is God. I, I, hate, I hate saying this, but it was like 2010, and uh, I was focusing on focusing on Osidius, which was an absolutely in, insane build. I mean, I, I the, the follow up to Project Rogue. <clears throat> I just wanted to be completely over the top. And I mean, it had three separate, uh, you know, computing systems in it. You know, it, it was all carbon fiber. It, it had LCD screens on the side, actually transparent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so, 
<laughs> oh god, you know, you you open a can of worms now. Uh, but uh, you know, Project Rogue, uh, and I, I, you know, I could talk on and on about my own mods like 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 forever. I mean, we don't have that kind of uh, disk space, I think, to uh, you know keep recording that. But uh, That's Google insane. it. Uh, but That's just crazy. So. I, it had uh, Project Residius was the follow-up to Project Rogue, which was you know just a rather large case with a lot of stuff in it. But uh, I wanted to to basically one-up myself, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, with with, with uh, Project Rogue, I actually had a, a separate Pico ITX system in it that ran as a, a file server, basically an always-on file server, uh, because Project Rogue itself was a, a, a massive uh, power drain. You know, it it was a, a ATX motherboard in a technically micro ATX case. You know, SLI had uh, two power supplies in there. One of them was a 24 volt power supply dedicated to the the Peltier. You know, uh, it, it, you turned that thing on and the lights dimmed. You know, the the <laughs> the power meter ramped up. You know, on the outside <laughs> of your house. I mean, it was it was a massive power drain cool project but i did have a dedicated uh server inside of it that i would use for for downloading uh linux distributions and such so <laughs> <laughs> when i moved to uh planning project Ocedius, oh, i really liked the idea of having an integrated always on server so that was part of the plan well there's also another company at the time that came out with uh a, a basically it was a seven inch display but it was uh v -Live was the name of the the company and they had this basically little integrated computer you know it, it, it's like a tablet form factor only it was thicker you know had like an atom uh, processor in it uh maybe we can add it to the show show notes i don't know if they're still around but i just said you know what i wanted a a, a display on the front of this project and that's kind of like my, my going ongoing theme was displays on the front of, of computers and it itself was actually its own computer so so that coupled with the pico uh you know computer inside of Asidius and then the micro atx system itself uh, makes for for three complete systems going back to what john mentioned about project hutch thank you uh I was working on both projects at the same time. I, I had uh, com been commissioned to do a project for, for Stuart, which was Project Hutch. And I decided, you know what, I'm not going to work anymore on Osidius until I finish Hutch. Okay, well then, there were multiple things that just kind of got in the way, you know, uh, delays in communication between uh, Stuart and I and different th things happening in my life. I just didn't ever get a, a chance to to go back and give it my full attention and here uh, now almost six years later it's it's still unfinished but then again so is uh, Osidius technically so yeah as uh, John mentioned it's, it's kind of an ongoing uh, joke <laughs> <laughs> Stuart would hop on the forum every once in a while and say, hey, got an update? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so did you say something about, like, carbon fiber? Uh, yeah, yeah, carbon fiber. Okay, so so carbon fiber, I love working with this stuff. It, it is absolutely amazing. And at the time, there were there were two guys, when I was planning on Sidious, which was originally going to be an aluminum build, uh, two guys, uh, Mark uh, Klebowski and, and Jesse Lang, who are unfortunately no longer with us. Um, they were uh, kind of pioneers in carbon fiber at the time. Uh, nobody was really working with it. It, it was uh, you know, very expensive. It, it taked, or it taked, God, I'm an idiot. It took a little bit of skill uh, to, to work with, and it just wasn't something that was fully explored. But I saw what they were doing with it. It's like, this is cool. You know, I was looking for something to, to kind of take things to the next level. So I had multiple, you know, communications with them, you know, both on forums and, and email and, and on Skype, talking to them and getting all the knowledge I could about carbon fiber and thought, you know what, this is something, something I can do. So I decided, you know what, I'll say this is going to be carbon fiber. So I, I bought a bunch of carbon fiber. I made uh, some aluminum molds. I, you know, I got some vacuum bagging equipment 
and I started working with carbon fiber. And I, I love this stuff. You know, it's it's one of those things where uh, it can be kind of intimidating. I mean, you're working with resin; it, it tends to dry or harden quickly. I mean, you 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 can't just take your time. Once you start mixing that resin and and, and applying it, and you deal with vacuum bagging, you're you're committed. You know, so there's there's kind of a, a a little bit of a thrill knowing that okay, this has to work, or I've just wasted a hundred dollars worth of carbon fiber. You know, uh, but I started building a Sidious with the carbon fiber. I, there are some some pictures around uh, on a few forums of the Sidious work logs where you can kind of see how I started and the direction I was heading. And one uh, particular picture, there's a picture of my daughter who is actually standing on this this uh, the shell for a Sidious. And I don't know how much she weighed at the time. You know, she she was young, but you know, this is a, a shell that's maybe a millimeter thick. And she's standing on it, full body weight, you know, and it's just amazing the lightness and the strength that this stuff has. I mean, until you've actually dealt with it yourself, you really have no understanding of how strong it really is. And even though Project Ocidius has gone through several planning revisions and it probably will be built at some point, uh, I've decided, you know what, I want to go back to carbon fiber. You know, it, it's it's great to cut, although the dust will kill you. Uh, it's great to cut. <laughs> It's just really smooth. It's, it's, it's easier, easier to cut than aluminum as long as you're using a rotary tool uh, with a blade. You don't want to uh, CNC mill it, for example. Uh, it's really hard to find end mills that'll hold up to that. But it's it's an awesome, awesome underutilized uh, modding tool. And I, I'm not sure why it is at this point. Maybe intimidation, cost. Uh, you know, lack of lack of skill or knowledge, you know, to work with it. I'm I'm not sure, but it's definitely something that I'm going to use in my my next mod. Yeah, it's a cool material, but yeah, you're right. It's like I don't I don't think I ever really see anybody ever use this stuff. But uh, but yeah, it's definitely cool. I and mean, especially it's it's definitely over the last couple of years as it's kind of become of more interest. Especially I think with like um the car industry is looking at it more and more just to save every little bit of weight um and the prices have come down but yeah it's still pricey and i think it's just uh i think it, you're right it's it's a lot of because uh it's just people's perception of it is that it's really really difficult to work with so i think people just kind of avoid it out of that that idea and you know it's not so much difficult to work with as it uh simply requires a lot of planning in advance you can't just wing it with the fiber. You have to have a solid plan. You have to, you know, make molds or or templates, you know, ahead of time. Uh, but once it's formed, you know, once once that's that's set, it's it's fairly easy to to cut and work with. And I I, I thought there for a while, like when I was working on Ocidius, I'd like to think I inspired a lot of people, or maybe I was inspired by other people. But it seemed to have a little bit of a, a resurgence. You know, people kind of were starting to work through it a little bit. It, they weren't doing anything really custom molded, you know, but they were you know using uh, it as like like custom motherboard trays or, or simple accents like that. You know, I haven't seen anybody really take off and do much for for custom completely molded you know shapes and then kind of as i thought that was going to take off uh simulated you know vinyl carbon fiber seemed to really take off you know with with that the the 3m you know Mm. dynock and stuff like that that that's kind of it's like oh hey we get the carbon fiber look but it's not carbon fiber and that really took off and has been really strong ever since and i don't think anybody ever really got around to working with carbon fiber again or at least I, you know, and truth be told, I haven't been following a whole lot of modding lately. Uh, so maybe there's something I've missed, but I'm, I'm definitely going to see if I can make it uh, have a resurgence. Yeah, because you're right. I've seen a lot of people use the 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 vinyl stuff, which uh, I guess that's part of it is most people are maybe, I mean, unless you're building a fairly, something that's specifically designed to be portable, I mean, there's not a whole lot of practical advantages to it. Um, I mean, it's really light, so if you do want something portable, it's like really the about the best material you can get. But if it's just going to sit on a desk, then it's mostly for looks. And then at that point, then yeah, you could just throw the vinyl on it and be done. Um, yeah, definitely for a, an SFF like a land land box or something like that, it's uh, it's really really cool stuff, especially like um, like 
like I said, like if you can get used like a lot thinner materials, then that opens up more possibilities. Cause that's part of the reason, like I, even though it's a lot heavier, I usually prefer designing with steel because I can use a lot thinner gauges, um, compared to if I did something with aluminum, it just kind of makes it easier to just when every millimeter counts, I mean, the difference in thickness between going with like, um, steel parts and aluminum parts can uh, really make the difference. Right. And you know, when I, when I design something in CAD, you know, I, I do deal with millimeters worth of clearance, you know, uh, exclusively. So it's, it's everything's, everything's metric. So, and in millimeters, I like to have just, you know, when you're designing something, you think, okay, you know, I could probably put an extra millimeter here, you know, just, just so you have that extra little bit of cushion. I think, nah, now nah, I'll be fine. And I take that away. So all my tolerances are really tight. Um, and yeah, you know, carbon fiber is so strong. You can get rid of a lot of that extra supporting structure is just no longer needed. And when you mention steel, yeah, obviously you can get it very thin. The, the, the trade off is a little bit of weight, but when you're talking about small form factor, you're, that's not a whole lot of weight to begin with. You know, it's not like you're lugging around a, a massive 80 pound tower. I, it's just not that big of an issue anymore. All right, and to wrap up the show, we are going to discuss our uh, fortnightly forum thread, which uh, this time around is the Geek A10 ITX LP dual slot and Flex ATX enclosure. Now, I don't know ter terribly much about this uh, other than the fact that it's a relatively simple, fairly interesting case, um, so reminiscent of the Lone Industries L3, uh, very, very inexpensive too. Uh, Iferlex posted this on the forum uh, earlier this week. Uh, John, I believe you added this to the notes. I actually don't know too much about this, um, so I didn't know if you knew any any more beyond that. Um, geek store. I don't know how many how extended the E is supposed to be on this one. <laughs> it's been around for a little while. They've done two or three different entirely acrylic cases. Um, so this one is Mini ITX, uh, supports a Flex ATX power supply or Pico PSU or whatever you want to use. Two low profile slots, um, but yeah, it's made entirely out of um, black and white acrylic. So it's currently up for pre-order uh, for about 35 US dollars, which is incredibly cheap considering the basically work that needs to go into this. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it looks interesting enough. I will say that there are some areas where it doesn't seem to be the most space efficient. Um, like there's pretty generous room kind of above the motherboard and, and to its side and um, sort of in front of the Flex ATX power supply as well. You know, it's a very, very simple design, which is probably why they're able to get the, the price down so, so low. Um, but, you know, for like a basic build, you know, keeping it pretty darn compact for the hardware, it seems to be a good option. Yeah, I could see using this as a test case or something like that. It's not the most efficient case, but you do have some. There are times when you don't necessarily need the tightest case, especially if you're doing a test bench or something like that for the mini ITX boards. That could be kind of cool. Yeah, and it's you know it's got uh, it says uh, up to 65 millimeters clearance for a CPU cooler, which is pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, and then in terms of I/O, you've got two USB 2.0, which is a little disappointing, but not surprising for the price. Uh, two HD audio, so just standard headphone and microphone jack, uh, and of course a, a power and reset switch all along the front. Yeah, the case measures in about six point three liters, so it's actually really quite relatively small. But it's great to see cheaper, small form factor cases on the market. Uh, hopefully, will aid in adoption. It looks like it has, have, has a panel that you can access under the motherboard tray. Under the, Does under it? Which is I didn't cool. even see that. Yeah, it looks like there's a cutout there. With oh, it does too. Oh, that's where the solid state drive is mounted. Ah, uh, uh, that makes sense. I also, had not even thought of that. Yeah, it looks that, that like it's extended down further so you could uh, attach two solid state drives, but also it's got a weird curve to it so you can get to the back plate of the motherboard. So I'm actually seriously considering getting one of these. That's very interesting. I mean, for the price, can't beat it. Unfortunately, they don't ship direct to New Zealand, but uh, I'll work around that. <laughs> <laughs> you you have your connections. I have my connections. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, with that, guys, I think we're going to uh, wrap up this episode of the show. I'd like to very much thank Craig for joining us. We're definitely hoping to do uh, these sorts of interviews now and in the future. Uh, Craig, once again, thank you so much for joining. I'm glad to be here, guys. And on behalf of everyone here, the four J's that are low volume, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you next show.